As we walk through life, so often we seem to be sleepwalking, merely going through the motions, not very much aware of anything beyond our routine, not very much aware of anything greater. But every once in a while, we experience something, or we meet someone, or we find ourselves somewhere, and like a powerful explosion of light inside of us, we suddenly become intensely aware of the presence of something infinitely greater. Such an experience can turn our life around, so much so that we see things differently for the rest of our life. A wise old professor from Africa once confided in me, Whenever I go to the Serengeti, I know with every fiber of my being that there is a God. It was not until I myself visited there that I understood what he meant. Wandering through those endless plains was a mystical experience, as though the whole of Mother Earth were crying out to me in a loud voice, Life! I am alive! It is quite an experience to be able to walk through the jungles of Africa, through the immense plains and over the great mountains of that enchanted place regarded by many as the cradle of human life, where it all began. Everywhere you go, you are startled by one thing, life. All around you, you see life in so many different forms. Up in the sky, the beautiful, colorful, singing birds of Africa. I learned some of their songs and learned to recognize their magnificent plumage. Everywhere in the sky is life. Below, too, on the ground, in the trees, you see life. As in a dream, the mysterious baobab trees appear before you, looking for all the world like things long dead, but they are very much alive, and some of them have been around for thousands of years. It is no wonder that some tribes regard these weird trees as the seat of ancient wisdom, something almost divine. You see the animals all around. Some of them appear to be something out of prehistoric times, like the ancient rhinoceros, the hippopotamus, or the great elephants. To see a baby elephant nursing at his mother's side is indeed an enchanting sight. You see herds of the most diverse types of antelope and wildebeest and buffalo and beautiful black and white striped zebra. You see herds of giraffe, bizarre shaped creatures who appear to float across the plain. You see the baboons with their human-like babies clinging to their mother's backs, monkeys and chimpanzees playing in the trees, families of gorillas as curious about you as you are about them. Then there are the big cats, beautiful sleek cheetahs, the fastest land mammals on earth, Leopards, elusive and dangerous and nearly invisible in the trees, but when you see one, you will never forget it. And of course the lions, the proud and majestic king of the jungle. The land is teeming with life. But the water too is exploding with life. One place appeared to have millions of flamingos all huddled together in one great sea of pink. They were eating the living algae, while next to them the great white pelicans went for the fish below. On the banks of the rivers and lakes stood ominously the dangerous hippopotamus and crocodile. Even under the earth itself, the earth is bursting with life.
Armies of very large and painful ants emerge and march, and one of them, in a particularly painful maneuver, marched right across my foot. It is as though the earth were pouring out life from under its surface, erupting in the form of the huge termite hills. It is as though the earth were too small to hold all the life it contains. Even death is not something terrible there, but just a natural part of the cycle of life. I even watched a lioness devour a wildebeest she had just killed. Death is there so that life may go on. All around is the unmistakable presence of one thing, and that is life itself, in all its awesomeness, in all its color. So often those wise words came back to me. Whenever I go to the Serengeti, I know with every fiber of my being that there is a God. Never had the words of the psalm spoken to me so powerfully. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Perhaps all of us should go to Africa once or to some other place of great natural beauty to be reminded just how filled with life this planet is. When we see life, we see God. When we participate in life, we participate in God who is life itself. We who live in cities do not have the same experience of this as I did in the fields of Africa. Our eyes focus on the concrete and steel, blinding us to the life all around us, even in our cities, and especially in our cities, with their concentration of human life. Concrete and steel can block our eyes and sometimes our hearts, so that we are not aware of the presence of God, so that we are not aware that we are in the land of the living. Let's look beyond that concrete and steel, become aware of the life all around us. Let us open our eyes to the land of the living, and we will be overwhelmed by the sight of the awesome presence of God.